Welcome everyone to Brian's Action Figure Reviews and Retro Wrestling Chat episode 43. Hey Tom, how are you? I'm bloody fantastic. Excellent. So, six more episodes to go. Is it seven? Anyway, Retro Chat. Seven as episodes, you, yeah. So as you know guys, if you've been watching all along, Retro, tra- bleh, retro Chat is coming to an end soon at episode 50. And this is episode 44. So 43. 43. See, still corrects me. And we're doing the live stream now every Sunday at 9.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. So get on there and enjoy that because we're doing lots of stuff on that. So let's get on with this week's episode. Tubbs, what have you got for me? Well, look, as, I, as we said last week, the fact that we're into the, the final run of the show, we might as well pick big matches. Or, you know, as they say, go big or go home. And that's so what she said. That's what she said. And then what I said was we were going to fucking watch WrestleMania 17's match between The Rock and Austin. And yeah, so we watched this and now we're going to talk about it. Because that's what we do. And that's we how retro it works. wrestle chat. And then people watch us and tell us we're shit. I kid, I kid. So two of the best of all time in yeah, their absolute ever do it. prime. So uh-huh. why isn't this 10 out of 10 match tops? I mean, I think Just to, that... just to skip right to the... No, I, I genuinely, genuinely do think that it comes down to opinion and perception. Like what you hail as a 10 out of 10 match mm. in pro wrestling. For me personally, I remember watching this at WrestleMania 17 live and I was fucking in awe of it. it just because it starts, like it, there's, this thing goes from the bell. Mm. And, it is, and it is one of those matches. There's not a lot of let up in it. And it's a 35 minute match. Um, but I, my take on it, looking back at it, and as you just said, they're the two of the best ever lace of a pair of boots. Mm. They were in their prime when this match happened. I think the this 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 match for me was one hundred percent how you do pro wrestling. Like it's how you sell, it's how you tell a story, it's how you invoke an emotion from the crowd, and it's how you fucking you. It, it genuinely is like I me. Mean, people look at. I mean, we've talked about it on the show. I've had conversations with people because you know pro wrestling is very rounded. Do you know what I mean? People love it mm. for the high spots. People love it for you know the 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 trash talk, and they love it for just the pro wrestling aspect and the story. This this match for me was one oh one pro wrestling. Like to the high to, done done to the highest level by two of the greatest of all time. So like yeah, yeah, it was it was from bell to bell, it was it started off like a house on fire and everyone was trapped inside. It was fucking savage. Yeah. But I think an ego got in the way of this match. If I'm and honest. whose ego do you think that is? The one who uh, felt like beating up his own son earlier on the night. Oh yeah, yeah. The the, the guy that writes the checks. Yeah. Um, see, I don't even I mean, look. Yeah, obviously, look. I mean, he didn't need to be down there, but I think because we're going to get right to the end of it, right? Because if you haven't seen the match, it happened years ago. Um, Vince McMahon is who we're talking about. Mm. But I think, yeah, I mean, you could have done that entire ending without Vince but I think the reason it was done with that was because let's be honest when you first saw that happen you probably lost your shit because like the fuck is happening here these guys hate each other what's going on and I mean it was that thing and and I think what sold it even more wasn't even Austin and McMahon it was fucking Jim Ross commentary I thought I knew this man what the hell are you doing Austin do you know what I mean it was just and before we go any further, I just want to talk about the commentary of this match. It was brilliant. This, but this was prime Jim Jim Ross. This was top match Jim it Ross. It was because he had Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman. This was the that dynamic. I never realized how good that dynamic was until I listened to this back. My God, they were they complimented each other so fucking well. And they painted a very good picture. See, this is for me, this is why I think this this match struck a chord with me so much is because it, mm. for me, it had all the flavours that I, that I think, personally, pro wrestling should have to be mm. at that level. You know, it had all the flavours in. Yeah, there was one or two things. There was a one thing that I really didn't understand when it happened. Go on. 
Um, it was announced as a new and a no DQ match, and but yet Rocket Rocket Austin still went with the spot to knock the referee out of the ring so yeah. he could hit him with the thing, and then Vince could throw him the chair to hit him. I was going. It's a no DQ match. Yeah, it didn't make sense at all. Could have done all this anyway. The ref never had to go down. Maybe, you know? maybe, maybe Earl Hebner was on a bump, bump for pay or something. Maybe it I was like know. he hadn't clocked in his bump card yet. <laughs> Vince was like, "You need to take one in this match, or you're not getting paid." But maybe, I, no, maybe I think though, it just, it's just further, <sighs> further up. add to the drama, like of the match for the referee to take a bump as well. Oh yeah, I mean, like, I mean, nobody can. I mean, look, I've always said it, right? Nobody. And it was can, a silly bump as well. I, I, do you know what it was? Do you know what I do love about I did love about this match? The sloppiness of certain things the totally, totally added to the fucking the whole aspect of this match. Like Austin, like do you know when he Austin was all <laughs> fucked up from hitting the turnbuckle and Rock just kept hitting him and he was just wobbling against the ropes coming back off taking another punch. Do you remember I said to you before, do you know when two guys stand in the middle of the ring and they throw back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, but it goes on forever. Like, this is what I mean about pro wrestling done well. Like, Austin was just literally walking into punches, but it was the selling of, like, being pure jelly legs and fucking everything and just getting knocked out. I mean, I mean this match for me, man, was just, like, as I said, Austin... Used it what was a technically good wrestler until he broke his neck and then he became a brawler, right? The, brawler, yeah, his yeah. the rock was never like the most technically garnered fucking like he was never like a, a Kurt Angle, you know, like Mr. Perfect Bret Hart type wrestler. But the rock is fucking electrifying in the ring. He's mm. actually it's so entertaining to watch uh, just how he moves and stuff. But even the sharpshooter, like The Rock normally does the sharpshooter really badly. But I felt in this match especially, he sat down into it. It was going, oh, he actually fucking put it on right here. Austin and Austin put on a, they wanted to re- put on a they deadly had, one. They wanted to recreate that Bret Hart fucking moment. Though. Oh, yeah, big time, big time. The sharpshooter. But you know what I did notice in this match that I never noticed back when I first watched it live? They, for, they were for, foreshadowing that heel turn before that heel turn happened. Because obviously the builds, you know, the whole build with my limb biscuits, my way mm. the right and, and and you know the fucking I thought like it was one of the best builds ever back then. I was like, this is so fucking good. Yeah. Um, I watched it beforehand as well. Billy. Yeah, I watched the build as well and I, I gotta I gotta admit I was still kind of going, this is still fucking brilliant. <laughs> this is the way they designed it. But you know the, the, back then WWF had um, balls. It, it, not even balls, it just Whatever it was, their promo videos for the matches. Oh, it was fucking top tier shit, man. It was just they got you invested by watching the way they designed them. Um, but this, yeah, this match, man, was just. But you could see it with Austin, like even with the even with the Sturbs version of his music when he came down. I I love that version of his music. Love it. But you remember the I think even more the than top, the original. Yeah, but I think when he he came out with it, I think everyone just thought it was like, oh, it's just a WrestleMania version of the song. But it would then become his heel, music, like his yeah. heel version, you know. Um, but you know, he but he was wrestling like a heel. He was doing heelish shit in this match. Um, so I think I think he was. I mean, there was no holdback with this. Like it was, and it was even like little things like you know where he like exposed the turnbuckle, and then the, like you know, I mean, obviously they do the dance round and the rockets busted, but then the rock reverses it. And he has him in the corner, and then he's like, he's talking shit to him. He's like, like this in his face, mm. and he just runs him into it. And Austin just, well, it was blasted into it. Yeah, they would, it was, it was full throttle in this match. You know, there was one or two moments where, like, when it went to the crowd, I was going, oh man, he's going to stay in here. I always think you know, anytime there's the crowd. No, but it, crowd I mean, like as I said, I mean, I don't mind crowd spots if they're just, just a spot that, like, they're, they go in and they're bang, 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 and they're back in, in, you know, but when it, when it ends up going. Like we saw All with the, the Ramsey and Punk one, when yeah. it, the whole entire core of it ends up outside, it just it just doesn't hit, land with me at all. But as I was saying it, watching the match, I was like, oh, please, please don't stay out here too long. Then the Rock <laughs> catches him and brings him straight in, like, you know. I was like, oh, see, there you go. Now we're back into the action. Everything fell, everything fell fast pace mm. in this match. 
Like even even some some of the moves, like some of the clotheslines in this, like the rock had fucking asked some of the claws, and at one point he took his head clean off. So like, let, let's let's go into go moments then. Yeah. So for me, I'm gonna steal this one. Best what? moments for me was well, I have I have three, I think, uh, two or three. My favorite moment of the whole thing was Stone Cold Steve Austin putting on the million dollar dream on the rock. Loved it. <laughs> and to add into a little nuance onto that, there was even a flavor of Piper Bret Hart sprinkled in. Yeah, where he well. threw, threw him back off the ropes. Yeah. To get out of it. I thought that was which I excellent. thought was really cool. Like it felt this this felt like a um this match for me, man, felt like a real old school icons match, if you get me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Old school, like fucking pro wrestling, like fucking at, at a very high level. Do you know, what I mean? it just it was just a spectacle. I loved it. It was excellent. Yeah. Um, other favorite moments. Um, I always I always love how ridiculous looking the Rock doing the stunner looks as well. The one handed stunner. It just looks so wrong, but it's so. You funny. know what I love? I've always been a fan. Of how the rock sells Austin Stunner. Yeah, throwing it, but you, you know you've you've heard the stories like that's that was on purpose. Like he, he was always like a joke between the two of them that like you know he always tried to oversell on it. Mm. But it got to a point then we had to like really fucking go overboard because he had oversold it so much. <laughs> um oh. other than, other yeah, I loved I love the commentary as well. But I will yeah. say like they did Heyman did cotton on to the fact that there was no DQ match too often, I think. Yeah. Who there made this? Like who made this a no disqualification? And you're straight away, like, I know we knew anyway. I remember this match really well, but you know, then, like, there's definitely shenanigans happening. And then, like, you do now, but when you watch this for the first time, like, when this match happened at WrestleMania 17, I think this took a lot of people off guard. I think, though, something had to happen because. These are two massive faces. And I, I, I like the dynamic of this match. This is why I love this match because they've done three matches. But I think 17 always kind of opens it up for me for conversation is because when Austin, see, when Austin and Iraq fought each other at WrestleMania 15, they were kind of, they were both rising. If mm-hmm. you get me, Austin had already been champion. The Rock <clears throat> was champion. But then Austin beat him. But the rock, the rock still wasn't at the level of like the people's champ, the great one. Generally, he was at seventeen. Um, but then when they rolled around to seventeen, the rock star was way higher than it was a year before. Mm. And then there, so that was probably along with the rock with, with Austin saying, "I have to beat you," like because Austin you no know, feeling like he was number two, you know. And then it, it was like a role reversal. And then, you know, obviously he's the champion, Rock, Rock's the champion, and he needs to beat him too because you know, Austin has to win over him. So, so there was a lot of that, you know, which was I thought was a fantastic thing because they went into this as like none of them were, none of them were heel. Mm, yeah, that's what I mean, they were both that really, behind. really in storyline, disliked each other and and wanted to win that match, you know, or needed that title. And it was, I thought it was a fantastic story. But I just, I found with this, it's insane that this was the one that they did the heel turn on because that took people by storm. But I will, I, I'll add another thing to it. Even though I personally don't think it was the right call to turn Austin heel, because I don't think it ever fully worked to the, to the level no. that I think WWE thought it would. He was too over to be a bad guy. Way too over. He was too over with fans. Um, and even when he turned heel, pe- people... You know, people kind of went with it for a while, but then it, they just have, ended up having to turn him back. Because, he, ended, you know, he ended up doing comedy skits with Kurt Angle on a fucking couch. Because himself and Kurt were both injured. Like, but what I'm saying is, outside of this, I mean, if you if this never happened, then you never would have got like cool things like the two-man power trip with him and Triple H. You know, mm. fucking... But Triple H I mean, riding his cocktails. No, but I mean, like, I mean, if you look back at the power trip, that was a really good fucking angle. Like, I mean, the two would look, and they were, they were just beating the shit out of the Hardy Boys and Lita and all this kind of shit. And then, obviously, you know, if you remember, Triple H got injured. Mm. And then, you know, and he was the leader of the fucking ECW invasion thing and fucking, you know, it was, there was a lot of elements that happened after yeah. this that I don't think. They went down a road they shouldn't have come down. <laughs> Well, yeah, anyway. I mean, look, there was definitely there was definitely moments where like we're kind of going, what the fuck is this? 
But I do think a few things came out of, not for Austin, but other people. I do think a few mm. things happened. A few things got set in motion after that, especially with the power trip and heel turn thing with Triple H. And, but I don't, and I always wonder this, if the direction hadn't, def- or if, it, if the direction they went hadn't have failed, if, if that succeeded, I don't think you would have got Austin versus The Rock at 19. No. <clears throat> Which the one you, they needed to do because obviously it was Austin's last match and it was the trilogy and, and you have to get The Rock to win and everything else. But, but um, yeah. So mm. bad points then. Um, bad points for me. Vince McMahon being involved. Um, Austin winning with the chair shots. Like he should... My problem isn't with the chair shots. He should have laid them in, but then finished them off with a rock bottom. That's how I would have done it if he wanted to solidify. I did one. You go all in. Go all in. Um, Hitting the chair shots and then just pinning them. It seemed very, very video game-ish or something. Not even that. And this is the point I'll make to you. It seemed very un-Austin. This is the point they were trying to make. I get, I get they were trying to make, oh, he was so desperate to do anything to, to win, but and I, I, like I, when, you, when, you've, when you've watched him yeah. feud with McMahon for three years, was it, or longer even? Which? When, he, when you've watched Austin fight to nail against Vince McMahon for two, three, maybe four years, I can't, I can't remember. I think it just, he, got the, he got the title at WrestleMania 14. And in his home state years. of Texas as well? Yeah. Like it's just, just a Vince McMahon decision, 100%. Oh, oh, come here. Look, I mean, like for me, and I've always said it, this, not in the same vein, but very much creatively to like even the crowd's reaction. Not in the same level, but it's in the same in the same vein of it. This very much felt like a, the same kind of decision Vince made. You saw this happen. You even saw the crowd. The crowd were booing the shit out of the rock and they were all frosty. Yeah. And the minute this, the minute they saw the whole thing with Vince happen. That crowd went silent. Did yeah. They were like, "What the fuck is happening here? Like, why is he doing? Why is this happening?" Reminded me now only when I was watching it, very similar to Taker losing the streak to Brock. Mm-hmm. A decision that on paper is like, "Oh my god, this is going to be unreal. We're going to shock so many people." But the reaction is not the reaction that you wanted. Now, look, in, in the B's eyes, they're like, oh, my God, look, people are fucking shocked. And, yeah, but that's not, that's not good for you. you know, because yeah, it's, now, it's go home heat. It's not... But yeah, that's like, oh, I'm fucking done with this shit. Like, it seemed that was the kind of reaction that that was that ended, that came out of that match was very much the people were kind of like, what the... And we, we, we've, seen, we've seen it loads of times since. We've seen it with Daniel Bryan thing. We've seen it with... Yeah. Vince McMahon likes to... Say, I know what you want, but you can't have it. That kind of thing, like, you know? yeah, and, and I think it's decisions he makes are very much things in his own head he thinks is what people want. You're paying, fuck you, I'll do what I want. That's what he says. But I mean, but to go back opinion. to what you were saying about the chair shots, um, funny enough, I love them. I thought mm. like, when he started wailing on the rock, I was like, oh, poor fucking rock. He's lying there taking these fucking shots, and a few of them were just like he was jabbing it down on him, hitting him in the fucking face and everything. I was like, <laughs> But I did get it. I do get it storyline wise and, and performance wise out of these two guys. I mean, like Rock was not going to lay down for us and they more to said it to him. He's like, you don't mm. be to the point of where I can't stand. I am not, you're not winning this match. And, and Rock and, and Austin was the same way. But it really showed the desperation of, of like Austin was willing to sell his soul to Vince McMahon to win this match to get, get his number one spot back. Mm. Kind of the story that we're telling. Um, but um, I loved it, dude. I love this match. I mean, I don't even think I, I named my good and bad points. I think Go I on. just name them now. Um, my well, the bad points was the ref bump. I just thought the ref bump was silly and stupid. Um, I'm like you. I could have done without Vince McMahon. I don't think the match needed Vince in any way. Mm. I just, but I still understand why they did it. He was going for the shock and heel turn, and then anything you. And I think that at that point in time, not now because we've already seen it, you know, and we know <clears> it's accurate. But at that point in time, when it happened, what was more shocking? Austin selling his soul to Vince McMahon to win back that title. I mean, and not only screwing the Rock, but screwing the fans as well. 
know what I mean? They go all oh, defend and defends made Austin 316 when you think about it. I just thought it was it, it, back when we saw it, but this is fucking insane. Not it like, wasn't like back back when I saw it, it wasn't it wasn't oh my god, I'm shocked. It was like, oh my god, I fucking hate this. Yeah, but see, this is the difference as well, Brian. Is yeah, and I even had I had to I had to take a step back when I was watching it. Back when this happened, the only bad point that we knew as fans, because Joe, obviously we didn't, the, the world of wrestling hadn't completely opened up to where we you know, would hear like so many stories and stuff. So in Vince McMahon, the only real thing that we kind of knew about Vince was the whole Bret Hart screwed up thing. Everything but, else really hadn't come to light in our in our older minds. So we didn't really look at Vince McMahon's character, like Vince McMahon the person, the way we do now. Mm. Because he's like such a horrible fucking human, you know. But you, but you, you know, you hated the McMahon character. I mean, I always got a, I always got a giggle out of the McMahon character in, in times. You know, there was always moments and stuff. Obviously, when he got older, it just became ugh. But yeah, ugh. back that's, then, he that's did the right, have, the right way to say it. No, but like now, <laughs> do you know what I mean, it's like I, I, it, Vince is gone so fucking old now. Vince shouldn't be on TV. Like he just shouldn't. Like the last time he came on TV, like he was just, it was so fucking hard to watch it. Like, like you got to remember as well, and lots of people don't remember this. We, back in that time, The Rock was cheered all the time. But the minute Austin appeared, boo. Exactly. John, but that was John Cena point. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, but it was only for the one man. It was like, but Austin, it was so weird that like, you know yourself, as you said, started this video, these, these two were at the top of their game this match happened like they had wrestled each other at Wrestlemania 15 two, two like, years previous I think the goal was to make Rock an even bigger face than he was but yeah. it, it backfired because oh, I mean, I, they I, lost I, us I, I think the Rock I think the Rock came out of this a mega a mega face because mm. if you remember the night after that on Raw um, they hit Austin and Triple H beat him down in a cage so he he had gotten his ass handed to him for that um for the time. But it was weird because I can't I genuinely passed that point. I can't remember where the rock went after that. Like, what was mm, neither can I. It like I can't was it was it was, it was in and around this time when he started taking breaks and stuff, yeah. Like his small breaks and stuff, because I do remember it being in and around that time frame, 17, 18, because he fought Hogan the year after. But um yeah, I mean look, I mean I I loved I loved a lot of the, this match. Like, there was a load of stuff I loved. I did love the sharpshooter exchanges back and forth and all that. Mm. I thought it was really cool. Um, I loved the heel workout of Austin in this match. Like the, just the heelish things he was doing throughout it. Like I was like, oh my God, man, this is foreshadowing shit. I never noticed any of this when I was fucking, when I first watched it. Years right back when when we watched it live. I just thought it was just Austin just taking his his uh, ass kicking shit up to an eleven. Like when you look back at it now, you're going, he was fucking foreshadowing that heel turn the whole match. He was wrestling like a heel. Um, so Tobbs, yo, give us your final verdict on this one. I'm giving this a motherfucking ten because this, as I said to you, minus the ref bumps and a few other things that maybe went wrong, like the table. We didn't even talk about the table. Um, the table completely broke without a table bump. Was that not broke from the match before? No, what happened was they were slamming each other off a constant, oh, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Austin hit the rock and he fell against it. And then the next shot, the camera panned back and he was on the floor through the table. <laughs> I was going, he just fell through the table, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll give it a 10, man, because this, as I said, this for me, this is what pro wrestling is. It's it, it, it's supposed to be fucking silly and stupid and goofy at times. And what this came, I found this, this match had an intensity to me. Like we said, Austin went straight in after that. There was no stare down. He just went for it. Um, and they did they did beat the shit out of each other in this match. You know, like, you know, there was a lot of good, and there was a lot of great moments in this. There was a lot of great reversers. There was like fucking, you know, it was just a fucking great fun match. Now, uh, the, the ending is a bit fucking wishy-washy for people. I didn't <laughs> mind it. I really, because it blew my mind as a kid, and I still kind of went, I, I fucking see where it went. But um, I know you have a different opinion. No, not far off, to be fair. Not far off, yeah. Like, me back then, I absolutely loved Austin, and I I fucking hated The Rock back then. I'm not going to lie. You know something? Back so, then, as I said to you, when, when, I, when I watched this match live, there was 20 people in a room, and there was two of us going for Austin, and it was the rest of them were all rock. So as I said to you, you could imagine the collective fucking outroar 
of people losing their shit when when you know Aston and fucking Vince screwed the rock mm. and me and fucking my mate fucking unreal. <laughs> but you know what I mean? But because it was in a in an environment. But I do totally get it. I mean, it is one of those things. It's you know, it's it's one or the other. Which 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 means I will give it eight. Yeah. Because it was fantastic up to that point. And I do understand why the decision was made, but it still doesn't make it the right decision, just because I understand it. Oh no, I agree with you there. I mean, if looking back at it now, like when it happened, I think I was more caught up in the the shock ah! value of it. I was like, oh my God, this is fucking unreal. But yeah, as I said even before, it's like I mean, looking back at it, this match didn't need Vince. You could have still had Austin turn heel. Like I, I remember as a teenager when all these events were happening and The Rock was winning month after month after month on every pay-per-view. And just when you think someone beat him, it's The Rock bottom on the tree and I would fucking throw them off the truck. Yeah, it was... Uh, I hate The Rock. I, I mean, a lot of people have said this. I mean, that, I mean, now don't get me wrong. On the mic, I don't, I think, I think he's untouchable. Hmm. It must be for like the most part, he's just so good on the fucking mic. But um, a lot of people, I mean, I've heard a few people say that like that they they look at The Rock as the John Cena of his era. That's what I'm getting at, yeah. You know, but, um, fantastic yeah. on the mic, but just like you know, has like not the not the greatest in ring worker. So from The Rock to another John Cena of his time, next week, episode forty four. The ultimate challenge, Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. This is not going to be a clinic. Which match, though? WrestleMania 6. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Not yeah. the Halloween Havoc one. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of why I asked you, man, because I was going, where is no. he going with this? <laughs> no, WrestleMania 6, Hogan versus Warrior, title versus title. I call it versus Hogan. It's going to be an interesting one because my nostalgia meter remembers very fondly about this match. I know it's going to be a shit match to watch, but it's not going oh, to be no. clinical. But as I've come to learn, even doing this show and watching wrestling over the years, you know, you <clears> look <throat> at Austin and The Rock in this match. You know, this wasn't a Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit match. Technically, fucking, you know, technical moves to it, you know, again, and savage spots and high spots. Mm. This was just a fucking good pro wrestling match. Yeah. Like a solid fucking top tier pro wrestling match. Um, and I know Hogan and Warrior is probably going to be in that same vein, more spectacle than fucking than performance. But um, I mean, as I said, I mean, you'd be surprised. It might still hold up. You don't know. And we'll see you next week, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and say hello in the comments. Be nice. And we'll see you next week, guys. Bye.